I'm George Eliasson. It's February 24th and today's update is wild. Russia has launched missile strikes against Ukraine's entire military structure and it's been wiped out. Now what precipitated this? A couple of days ago Ukraine launched a rocket attack on a Russian border patrol station and destroyed it. Between then and now Ukraine launched shells into the city of Belograd in Rostov region, Russia. That's right. Ukraine launched shells into a civilian area in Russia. The direct spark of this attack came at around 4 a.m. local time on February 24th. Ukraine fired over 170 shells into residential neighborhoods in Donbass. Following this, Vladimir Putin gave an address on TV saying that the Ukrainian army should lay down their arms and leave and not protect the nationalist battalions doing these things. These nationalist battalions are only there to kill people, kill civilians, kill and kill and rape and kill. And that's what they've been doing this whole time. They are what pre prevented Kiev from impl implementing the peace process. The Nationalist Battalions are who prevented Kiev from implementing the peace process to begin with. For the last eight years, that's been the goal. That's been Russia's goal. To get Kiev to move on their side of the Minsk Agreement, and it never happened. And Kiev is pretty honest about this. They had no intention. Now, Ukraine tried to move tanks across the border into Russia. Those tanks were destroyed. Russian military are in Odessa and Kharkiv, and Ukrainian tanks are moving to Kharkiv now. The Russian army is moving toward Kiev. Well, what can we expect? I can't speak for any government, obviously, and this is just analysis. Things are very, very fluid right now. Russia is going to occupy Kiev while the nationalists are all hunted down. The ones that resist and fight will be killed. The ones they capture will be put on trial for the crimes they've committed. What crimes are those? The next feature that I'm putting out in a few weeks documents that very, very well. Here's a taste of it. I'm putting it on the screen behind me for the faint of heart. If you look at that, it looks like a very bad grade B movie. But here's the reality. That's Pravi Sector, the most powerful nationalist group in Ukraine, slicing a police chief's throat in front of his wife. The reason for this is they wanted to take over all the police chief positions in Ukraine. They demanded all police chiefs quit their positions. And this is how they advertised it. Ukraine itself has been putting up for this with this for eight years. And the brunt of this has been focused on Donbass. And the number of videos like this I could show you are just too many and too gruesome. I will be showing some of it in that feature. What happens next? I'm expecting that after they hunt down the nationalist battalions, for us, the Russian army to make a withdrawal. They really have no interest in taking over Ukraine or anywhere else. The most important point in this is that when a large number of civilians were going to die, Russia stood up for them. I'm an American conservative, and I went through this in 2014. So you can take what I say with a grain of salt or you know, understand its reality. Where I am right now is the second stop Kiev would have made, their army would have made, reclaiming the borders. Had they been allowed to do that today, I wouldn't have survived until evening. The Ukrainian Nationalist Battalions have orders to kill all journalists, all anything, everybody, it doesn't matter who it is, that stands against them, rights against them. And even in Kiev right now, they pass the law. Any journalist, foreign or otherwise, that says anything they don't like about the government, 
is facing an eight-year sentence in jail. Now, where does this go from here? That's the big question. And in all honesty, there isn't anybody alive that can answer that. The situation is just that fluid. Things are subject to change because of all the different threads of contingency involved. And facts are piling on faster than the evidence can, fall, can catch up to it. So we're going to be filled with stories that we need to verify. We're going to see urgency in stories that are almost verified but not quite. And this is normal for this kind of situation, especially from an on-the-ground point of view. Within a few days, this will start sorting out. So from here to there, I'll update where I can and with the best information I can, I can muster. Thank you very much.